Hello, everyone. I haven't done a, a periscope like this for a while. So hi, Erlene. First one in here. Alexis, Truly Purely Living. Welcome. Um, I uh, debated whether doing a periscope or not today, but the Lord impressed me that I need to do one on trusting in Him because so many people don't trust in God enough. Oh, you just got home, Erlene? Wonderful. Oh, thank you, Alexis. I, I, I love Regina's too. I think she does a little bit better than I do, but we're, you know, we're both different. We both give the, give the gospel in a different way. But, um, so I'm going to, uh, start out with, with, uh, with a prayer and, and, uh, I want you to talk, to listen to the prayer and then I'll get into the, into the study. Thank you, dear Lord, for allowing me this opportunity to be on this periscope again. I haven't been on doing these for a while, Lord, but I thought I would come in and tell people that they need to trust in you with all their heart because you are the only way to salvation lord we all think that we can we can do things without you but we can't lord we are lost without you and i just pray that those that come in that don't understand who you are will get to know you and love you and trust you as we do and that they will want to follow you in all things lord there's a day coming when they're going to wish they had we need to keep on the straight and narrow lord we need to stay into our bibles and i pray the Lord, that everybody will stay into their Bibles. They will put their faith and trust in you and never, never, never waver. Now go with us all. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. As I, as you can see, the title of it is Trust in the Lord. You know, I'm one of these kind of... Oh. <laughs> oh, you've been missing them? Oh, well, that, I thought I'd come back and do that. Um, um, oh, there's somebody saying you don't know me. You don't. I'm not judging anybody. Um, oh, hi, Castley. Welcome. Thank you. If you see any comments that I've missed that are that are abusive, please block them because I don't always see them. Oh, you're welcome. But you know, oh, thank you. You know, the Lord has been a blessing to me so much. You know, in my life, things have not always been the greatest in the world. And the thing of it is, yesterday something happened that I don't know why it was. It happened the way it did. I know what who was behind it, it was not... Um, Oh, okay, thank you. Um, I know who was behind it. it. was not God. But anyway, I was sitting, I don't know, remember what I was doing yesterday. I think it was loom knitting on my, loom knitting my sock, sitting in my chair where I'm at right now. And I just coughed a little bit. And all of a sudden, I started choking. And I wasn't eating anything. It's, it's, it's easy to, when you're, when you're eating, to start choking on food because I've done that before. But I started coughing. And all of a sudden, I choked and I choked and I choked. I couldn't get my breath. I, I I went to drink water, that didn't help, and I and I went to the bathroom thinking that would help, and I just I just sent up a prayer up to the Lord. I says, Lord, please help me because I knew what was happening. I knew that the devil was trying to destroy me. He he will do that. He he will catch you down and take you where you don't want to go. And that's why I say we gotta put our faith and trust in the Lord at all at all. The Lord is the one we're looking to forward to see. And Satan's gonna to try to tell try to tell people that what they're doing is right right. But what they're not doing is right. Oh, yes. You know, I get attacked so much, Deborah. It's terrible. The devil just wants to attack us Christians so bad because he doesn't like us Christians. And he's going to do everything he can to take us down. You know, and I know it came from the devil. It not, did not come from the Lord because I couldn't get my breath. And I hadn't been eating or anything. I just, just started coughing. And all of a sudden, I just kept on. It just kept choking and getting worse and worse and worse. Oh, um, and... Uh, and the thing of it is, I'm th thankful that I'm okay, but it was scary, you know, and I had to put my faith and trust in the Lord and keep my faith and trust in him. We have to do that. Never turn your back on him. Remember, he's there. You got you to gotta keep, keep him in your mind and your heart all day long. Welcome, Philip. Welcome. Good to see you. Um, now, I know many people think that they can go through this life without trusting in the Lord. I've done it myself, too. You know, something will come along and say, well, we can do it ourselves without asking the Lord to help us. Blessings to you, Philip. But you know that's not true. We can't do anything without the Lord's help. He's here to help, help, here to help us. You know, we're nothing, and we have nothing without the Lord. And I've come to realize that, because there's been many times, and I'll admit it, yes, we are weak and frail. And I will admit that I've, been, I've done that very thing I'm saying to you that I'll try to do things on my own without asking the Lord to help me, thinking, well, I don't need him. I can, I can do it. But that's not true. That's right. He is worthy of all. But we have a tendency to feel that we can do it ourselves. We don't need him. But that's not true. We need him every day of our life, 24 hours a day. Because 
if we don't keep our faith and trust in him, that that's when the devil's going to ensnare us. He's going to take us down to, to and get us to do what he wants us to do. Um, or, uh, that's true, too. That's true, Deborah. That's right. And, and, and that's the problem. And I think we all do that. We've had a tendency to, to try to do things on our own. If we haven't, then, then we're pretty lucky. Because I know most of us, if you're anything like me, you're going you're gonna to try to do things on your own so much, you know, without even thinking twice about asking the Lord for help. And then right in the middle of it, you stop and say, whoops, I forgot to ask the Lord to help me. You know, because that's the only way we can get through the things we're getting through. I can't get through my trials without the Lord. If I tried to do them without the Lord, I'd never make it. Uh, sure, the trials are there to strengthen me, but you get through one trial, and oh, I, you just you just didn't think he did. Don't 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 put God down because the problems that you're having call, come from the devil. All the sin and the problems we have in this world are from Satan. They're not from God. God is a loving and merciful God. He wants us all to come to Him and trust in Him. And you know th things are not going to happen the way you want all the time, but. That's right. It is our fault. It's just the way we live sometimes. That's exactly what we do. And But you got to put your faith and trust in the Lord. It's not God that's causing the problems that you're having in your life. If you're, if you're having problems, whatever they might be, put your faith and trust in the Lord. He will get you through them. Don't blame him for the problems that you're having. That's what people do. They blame him for everything that's going on. There's sickness. Um, anything that happens to them, they're blaming God for it. Well, why wasn't God there when I needed him? Like somebody, somebody's family member will die of cancer, and the first thing they'll do is they'll say, well, why, was, why wasn't God there? Why didn't God restore that person to health and, and keep them from dying? It wasn't, the, it, it wasn't the opportune time, and it wasn't in their benefit to do so. You have to understand, God works on his own timetable. We can't force our will on God. We have to let God lead, and we follow him. We don't take the lead. Because he knows more for us than we know for ourselves. Hi, good to see you, Pam. Welcome. He he knows us better than we know ourselves. He knows e every inch about us. You know, we think we know all about ourselves. You know, and and that's the thing. I and it's like Regina said. She don't like herself. Well, I can say I don't like myself, but I love the Lord. You know, I don't like myself sometimes in some of the things I do, because I'm like everybody else. I do things that are dumb, and afterwards, when I do them, I realize. Well, what did I do that for? Why didn't I ask the Lord to help me? He would have helped me, and I and I just decided to do it on my own. You know, we all we all do dumb things, and then we wish we hadn't them in the long run. But that's where that's where uh, praying to Jesus and getting into the Word of God really helps. You know, yes, we, that's right. He knows he knows the end from the beginning. He knows the he knows what our what's going to happen to us at the end. He knows what whether we're going to be lost or saved. We don't know it. He knows it, but we got to keep our faith and trust in Him. Think of him 24 hours a day. Never give up on Jesus. And, you know, and I've gotten to the point now where I don't even put the TV on during the day because I know if I put the TV on for maybe one program, my mind goes where it shouldn't go. And it's off of Jesus and on that program. And I don't want that. I want to keep my mind on Jesus. That's right. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and, he's and the end. Um, I believe that Paul knows he was saved. He wasn't at, at the time that... that uh, he was he was Saul though, and, and he had Stephen stoned. He was converted right after that. And can you imagine how what a glorious day that's going to be when he gets to heaven and they and and uh, Paul sees uh, uh, Stephen and Stephen sees Paul. They lay eyes on each other for the very first time in heaven. You know, and it's gonna ma imagine it's gonna be Stephen's gonna wonder why Paul's even there. You know, because he he had him stoned. Um, and that's the thing. You know. The Lord is wonderful. He's absolutely wonderful. And if you don't know the Lord like like you should, get into the Word of God and, and trust in Him. He's in the Bible. He's from Genesis to Revelation, all the way through. Um, that's right. We have to read the Bible. Exactly, Erlene. He's in the Word of God, and the Word of God stands true. And what He says, go. He means what He says, and He says what He means. Everything in His Word is true. And we can take it to the bank. We know how the story ends. We know what's going to happen. We know what's going to happen to those that don't put their faith and trust in him. And we know that there's going to be a lot of people that are going to go by the wrong way. Thank you for the super heart, Kay. We know there are people that are, that are going to be lost because they haven't put their faith and trust in him. And that is sad. But we have to learn to remember that's what God is there. He is wanting us to come to him. But so many people have turned their back on him. What, how do I feel about the Mosaic Laws? 
um, the <clears throat> Mosaic laws or were done away with. That is what was done away with when Jesus died on the cross. The only thing that, that was still standing today is the moral law, and that's God's law. The Mosaic law was not written by God. That was written by Moses. And that's, I don't know how many laws that really is, but that's irrespective because those laws no longer exist. Because when Jesus died, we didn't, we had no need for a uh, sacrifice. We didn't have to sacrifice the law. Um, <laughs> thank you. That's funny. We had no need for a sacrifice anymore because Jesus became our sacrifice at that time. So the Mosaic laws, we don't need them anymore. So I know if somebody asked about that, but I'm, I'm glad to answer that they're no longer needed. We don't trust in the Lord. Put your faith and trust in the Lord. Welcome to Periscope for the very first time. Um, and put your, and read, the, get into the Word of God and understand what God is trying to tell you in His Word. You've got to put your faith in Him every day of the week, and on Sabbath especially too. That's right, He is the Lamb of God. You put your faith and trust in Him 24 hours a day. Hi, good to see you. Welcome. And especially on Sabbath, put your faith and trust in Him all day long. Give Him the day... The, the, the day that he that he told us to honor him on and a lot of people don't don't choose to do that and that's sad you know a lot of people turn their back on God for one reason or another because they don't think they have to come to God you know and they don't feel that they have to accept God to be saved but but that's the way that's right Jesus took away the sins of the world he took all our sins away he bore our sins on the cross he didn't have to do it but he did it because he loved us enough that he was willing to to take his sins, all of our sins upon his shoulders. And that's a very, very powerful when you think about it. Look what he did for us. And there's going to be coming a day when we're going to be asked, Hi, Brenda, good to see you. Welcome. That we may be asked to give up our life for him. Do the very same thing. Sacrifice our life for Jesus. He did it for us, and we should be willing to do it for him too. That's putting our faith and trust in the Lord. Trusting him with every fiber of your being. And my favorite Bible passage is, is Proverbs 4, 5 and 6, where it says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. And he will. Um, oh, you know, Deborah, I'm glad that you've come to realize that he can mend a broken heart. That's right. We have to take up our cross daily. And that's the problem. How many of us really do take up our cross daily? We've got to be willing to die for da Jesus daily. You know, we sin daily, understandable, but we have to ask Jesus to be with us. You know, if there's a sin that we've committed and we haven't asked for forgiveness, we need to go to the Lord and ask him to help us with that sin. Take whatever sins we might be harboring in our life and get rid of them. Because, you know, sin separates us from the love of God. And if we don't get rid of the sin, we're not going to make it to heaven. That's pure and simple. We need to get rid of the sins that are in, in our life. Whatever sins you might have. I ask the Lord to forgive me all the time. Past, present, and future. Because Satan is, is so wily a, a, a defeated foe that he's going to come along and he's going to try to, to get, take you down everything, every time you turn around. And like I said, he's an uninvited guest. He'll walk in your house. You can have your door locked, but he can come in your door anyway and, and invite himself in. But the thing of it is, when Satan gets a hold of you, He's going he's gonna to get you to think and know his way is right. And that's unfortunate. But a lot of people have done that very thing. They put their faith and trust in, in man. They put their faith and trust in, in, in something besides God. And look, where's it got them? It's got them nowhere. A lot of people are going to die because they haven't put their faith and trust in the Lord like they should. I don't want that for any of us. There's a day coming when our, we're, we're going to be tested severely for our faith. Are we, are we going to be willing to trust him enough in the Lord that he's going to see us through what's coming? Because if we don't, we're not going to make it. Because there is a day coming when we're going to have to put our faith and trust in the Lord. We're going to be tested so severely. Our faith is going to be tested. What are we going to do? Are we going to, are we going to turn our back on God? Yes, it is going to be tough. But are we going to turn our back on God? Or are we going to stand up for Jesus and say, well, I, I honor Jesus no matter what? We have to be willing to do that. And I know a lot of people are not going to, but whatever we do, they're in here. You've got to keep your, your faith and trust in Jesus. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be very hard, but you have to stand firm. You have to tell God, whatever you do, that you're going to stand up for him. And you're not going to waver because you don't want to take the mark of the beast. You don't want to go by the way of the devil. Because that's what he's wanting everybody to do. So that's why he tries to get our mind off of God in every way he possibly can. Through any time of entertainment. Whether they're video games, uh, DVDs, 
or whatever it might be. It is things that will take your mind off of God. Because you and I both know, once you get involved with those things, and I will admit it, I've, been, I've played games before, and when you get in to start playing those games, Rhodesia, welcome. You start playing those games, you think about what you're doing on the game to try to win the game or whatever, but you haven't got your mind where it needs to be on the Lord. So then it's time to, to put the game away and, and get back to the Lord again. Um, thank you, Brenda, for the super hearts. Well, thank you. Welcome to everybody that's just come in. Hi, Rhodesia. Welcome. And that's where I tell myself, Lord, I've helped me to, to be a little more obedient to you. It's very it's very tough. And it's, um, it can be any kind of games that take your mind off of Jesus. Any kind of video games. I'm not saying games are bad per se, but if you continually play them all day long, you don't and you don't put your mind where it needs to be. Satan is going to take your mind off of Jesus and he's going to put your mind on those games and you're not going to be thinking about him. You need to keep your mind on him at all times. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Like I said, you can play them sparingly and I do play them sparingly, but the games that I play are mind games, the ones that you it uses your mind so you keep so I can keep my mind on Jesus at the same time. You know, yeah, th I I'm yes, I'm glad I did Deborah because you know a lot of people do that. They get into entertainment, you know, whether it's music or it's, like I said, video games, DVDs, or whatever it might be. And then Satan's got their mind into that stuff, and they haven't got their mind where it needs to be. That's exactly what he do. He does. If he thinks, if he can get your mind off of, off of uh, what he's supposed to, off of God, thank you, Pam, for the super hearts. If he can take your mind off of God, he's got you right where he wants you. And sad but true, he will take you down. That's the sad thing of it. He's going to take you where you don't want to go, and he's going to have you do things you wouldn't normally do. So that's why it's imperative that we all stay into the Bible, into the Word of God. Study, the, study to show yourself approved. As Jamal has said, Regina has said, I have said before, and, and uh, Dr. Owen, I think well, Forerunner said the same thing. We need to show, study to show ourselves approved. Get into the Word of God. Because if we don't, we're never going to know what's happening or we're not going to be ready for what's happening. Welcome, Gabriel. Good to see you. Welcome. And you're, I watched your replays. They were, they were wonderful. Thank you for, for doing Periscopes. So I'm, I'm imploring everybody that if you have a loved one or family member or you yourself have wavered and you're falling short of the glory of God, get into the Word of God. Get your mind back on Jesus where it needs to be and put your faith and trust in him where it needs to go. Because I don't want anybody lost. Because, um, yes, we are. We're on here for him. You're exactly. I'm doing this periscope for Jesus. I'm not doing it for anything else. I'm doing it for him because I want people to understand that he is there. He wants us all to come to him. But there are so many people will turn their back on him for whatever, like I said, for whatever reason. And they don't put their faith and trust in him enough they don't feel that they have to put their faith and trust in him that they can get by they can do things on their own and so that's what they'll do and they stumble and fall and I have done that very thing I've stumbled and fallen you know thinking that I was okay but then I realized afterwards and I and I got up and I I did, couldn't, didn't kneel down, but, I, but I, pray, I bent down and I told the Lord, I says, Oh, Lord, please forgive me for what I've done. I didn't put my faith and trust in you like I should have. And that's so true. And, and, I, and I was so sorry for what I've done. And we need to do that. We need to always ask the Lord to be with us in every situation, whatever that situation might be. Sure, you're going to have trials and tribulations, but that's to strengthen you for what's to come. Hi, Carrie. Welcome. Darlene, I know you were here before, but welcome back in again. Because the trials and troubles that we've got are on us right now are nothing compared to what we're going to be going through to the, the time of trouble. And that's when we really have to put our faith and trust in the Lord to get us through it. Because if you don't have your faith and trust in the welcome wide line. If you don't have your faith and trust in the Lord now, when that tribulation comes, okay, okay, Carrie, you do that when the tribulation comes, we're not going to have our faith and trust in God, and we're going to fall. A lot of people don't realize that God said our bread and water will be sure. He will keep it. That's right. This is all in preparation for the, for what's to come, and what's to come is going to be absolutely terrible. It is going to be tough. If you think what you're going through now is you're having a tough time going through your, tri your tri tri trials and tribulations, just wait until the um, Jacob's trouble comes, the 
the national sunny law you're really going to have trouble then you're going to find out how much trouble you're really going to have it's not going to be easy it's going to be very tough because the the um, holy spirit is slowly being withdrawn from this earth and by the time the national sunday law comes you're not going to have the holy spirit to rely on anymore what are you going to do you're going to be standing alone you have to put your faith and trust in god and if you can't put your faith and trust in god to 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 help you through it you're not going to make it through it we all have to ask god to help us i do that time and time again i ask the lord please lord help me to get get through what's coming because we know it's going to be a trying time and what i'm going through now is to make me stronger you know get me really strong yeah that is that and you're exactly right well no our loved ones betray us that's when it's going to be the hardest but you know something we cannot a uh, waver one bit and 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 turn away from god because our our family has betrayed us because we know that's going to happen the bible has said so that mothers will turn against daughters fathers will turn against sons mother-in-laws against daughter-in-laws and son-in-laws against father-in-laws and things like that it's going to get very very tough and we know our family and friends are going to betray us they're going to turn their backs on us and some of them may already have but we have to stand true anyway we have to pray for them because there's coming a day when when we can't we are we going to stand up for our family or are we going to stand up for god that's what I'm, the question is because you either you either stand up for God or stand up for family. Because your family can't save you, unfortunately. You know, and a lot of people are going to be upset if, if something happens to their family, you know, and their families betray them or things like that or, or, or get angry because they've, they've chosen to accept God. We know that's going to happen. People are going to turn their backs on us because of the Sabbath. And, and, and unfortunately, a lot of people, because their family is feeling that way, they're going to say, well, I didn't know you felt that way. Well, I guess because I love you so much, I'm going to, I'm going to do what you want me to do. There they're taking and putting their faith and trust in their family members and not in God. They're taking their faith off of, and trust off of God and putting it on their own family. And their family can't save them. And that's that. You're right. The family can make it worse. Unfortunately, they are going to make it worse. We know that persecution is coming. It is coming with full force. And if we're not ready for it by having by putting our faith and trust in God and not, now we're not going to be ready for it then. Because if you have your faith and trust in God now, when that time comes, you'll, your faith will be so strong in the Lord that you'll be able to meet whatever trials that come upon you. And believe me, the trials are going to be very severe. You're going to be tested for your faith. You're going to be jailed. You're going to be uh, um, maybe exiled. We don't know. You're going to have to hide in the rocks and the mountains. And that's the thing, you're going to have to, you, you're going to have to uh, stand up for yourself, but you're going to also stand up for Jesus. You're going to, uh, you're going to have to, um, they're going to want you to recant your faith. We can't do that because then you lose all your faith and trust in the Lord again. We can't, we can't recant our faith no matter what you do. Do you think that it was easy for Jesus to, to bear what he had to bear? You know how he prayed to his father, to heaven and father, to take the cup away from him. He really didn't want to have to do it. But it was God's will that he did do it. But he was willing to do it for us anyway. And it was an awful thing for him to bear. And what we have to go through is probably nothing compared to what Jesus went through. But it's going to be bad enough that we should be willing to suffer for, for his namesake. Because that's what the Bible said. We are going to have to die for his namesake. And a lot of people back in the dark ages died. John Huss and a lot of them died for their faith. They they kept their faith in Jesus and died for him. We have to be willing to do the same thing. Um, and that's the thing. Are you willing to die for Jesus? I hope you are. You know, we can say right now that we're willing to die for Jesus. And I hope when that time comes and when we have to show our, our, our faith to the, to the ones that are wanting us to recant, if we can actually do it. You know, we have to really be strong. And that's where I ask the Lord to keep my strength away, uh, up full. Because if I lose my faith, and I lose my strength, I know what's going to happen. I'll end up taking the mark of the beast. And I don't want that. And I don't want any of you to do that. So whatever you do, stay strong. Don't let the devil come in and distract from, detract from you and tell you, oh, you don't have to believe in God. Just put your faith and trust in me and everything will be okay. Well, we know that's not the truth. And unfortunately, a lot of people that have already gone by way of Satan did that very thing. They were satanists and they believed in satan and they wouldn't believe in god they put their put their faith and trust in, in an evil angel 
thinking that that uh, they're going to make it, but they don't realize that they have sealed their fate by by doing what they've done. And the same thing is going to happen with the mark of the beast. We know that if you take the mark, what do I think of Muslims? Well, that's not in this is that's not part of my periscope. But I love I love everyone. I love everyone, no matter who they are, and everybody's welcome here. Um, and that's the thing. Whatever you do, don't turn your back on God, whether your family is for the Lord or not. Yes, you have to put your faith. You have to put your faith in God's hands. Put, put your faith and trust in God, and ask Him to help you. Because we, yes, we are of all different religions. You're right, Deborah. That's exactly right. We're not all of the same religion, but it still may, remains to, uh, that the fact remains that we're going to be persecuted for our faith. We're going to be tested, and we're going to be tried severely. And if we can't stand up for God, then we're going the other way. Because there's no sitting on the fence. Either you have, either you love Jesus or you don't. And we have to show our ourselves to Jesus that we really love Him by by being true and faithful to Him every day. No, I don't believe it's not Jesus or Allah. It's Jesus. It's Jesus and the Father in heaven. There is no Allah. Allah is just a fake God. I don't trust in God. I don't trust in. Uh, excuse me. I don't trust in Allah at all. I put my faith and trust in Jesus. He is coming back again, and He's the one who I'm coming. I'm going to see in heaven. There's no, there's no proof of Allah whatsoever. You're right, Alexis. There's no proof of Allah. These people that come in here and say Allah or Muhammad or anything like that, there is no proof of Allah. But I'll tell you one thing. There's proof of God. You know how I know? Because he's in the Bible. He's in there from Genesis to Revelation. And also his word, <coughs> his word is true. He's in the whole Bible. And he's also, he's also in nature. If you don't believe in, if you don't look, if you look, don't look around you, you can see God in everything. <clears throat> He's in the trees, the flowers, the sun, the moon, the sky, the stars. Um, that's how I know that God's uh, God's alive. God's alive and well. And He's up in heaven pleading for us right now. And I, I beg of you to put your faith and trust in God. If you haven't put your faith and trust in God, please do that. Because if you don't, you're going to be lost. Let me get some water from that. I don't want anybody lost because you chose to, to, to go by way of the devil. Yeah, well, and the thing of it is, <clears throat> oh, okay, all right, okay, Alexis. But you know the thing of it is, I want everybody to understand, I love people, and I, and I want everybody to be saved like God does. That's right, prophecy is being fulfilled each and every day, all around us. And I want, I want people to understand that I'm, I'm here because I love you, and I want you to be saved. And so does Jesus. He wants you to be saved too. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> that being said, you have free will. You can choose whichever route you want to go. Whether you choose to trust in, in God or, you, or you're going to go by way of Satan. That's your choice. God's not going to force you to go, to go either way either. You know, He's hoping that you choose him. But if you choose, but if you choose the devil... Then you'll be you'll be actually lost someday, and I don't want that for anybody. I don't want anybody to go by route, way of the devil. And that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here to let you know that God does exist. He is waiting for each and every one of us to come to Him. Those those that have, have not come to Him need to come to Him. Need to ask Him to come into your life. Put your faith and trust in Him. Get into the Word of God. <coughs> Read your Bible. Because if we don't get into the Word of God, we're not going to know what was happening at the end. And we know, those of us that do get into the Word of God, each and every day, we know what the story says. We know how it's going to end. But there's a lot of people that don't know. And I implore you to get into the Word of God so that you will understand what, what's happening on this earth. Because what's happening is, is, is going to be tough for those that aren't ready for it. <clears throat> His father, uh, uh, Jesus is God in the, yeah, Jesus did pray it to his heavenly father. You have to understand, Jesus is God, but he's not the heavenly father. They are two separate beings. Je Jesus is God because he has God's character. But he did pray to his heavenly father. But, it, but the heavenly father chose not to let, the, let that pass from him. And the same thing with us. A lot of people think that we're not going to be here for the tribulation. That we're going to be taken out of this earth. But that's not biblical. You put your faith and trust in God. You're going to be here during the tribulation. You will make it through it as long as you keep your faith and trust in God. He will see you through. You have to get into the Word of God. You have to read the Bible because that's what the Bible is there for. It is our stepping stone 
It is our only sure word of, of prophecy. It is the sola scriptura, the Bible and the Bible only. If you don't read the word of God, you're not going to understand. There's many, not the secret rapture. Yes, his second coming is biblical, but not the secret rapture. Because I know you're probably thinking, well, Jesus is going to come and, and take us out. Hi, Regina, welcome. Jesus is going to come and take us out of this earth, you know, secretly. And then he's coming back seven years after the tribulation. But that's not biblical. Or there's seven years of tribulation and he's coming back after that. That is not biblical. Nothing is biblical about that at all. Because the Bible talks in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 about his coming is literal, literal audible, and visual. And if Bible says in Revelation 1-7 that every, every, every eye shall see him. You don't bring that into this. That My divorce is not part of this periscope. That has nothing to do with it. God has forgiven me for it. You do not bring that into it. And this is not, that is none of your business anyway. We all sin and we fall short of the glory of God. But it's what you do with those sins. If you continue to sin day in and day out, commit the same sin over and over again, God's not going to forgive you forever. He's not going to strive with man forever. And... Oh, uh, well, this person's gone. Bye. I'm sorry I had to block that person. You, can, you know, it can only take so much. <laughs> I, I blocked him, Brenda. I had, to, I had to block him. No, you know, if you're an atheist, you are welcome here. You are very welcome. You know what? It's, you need to hear about this. You know why? Because God loves you. He loves you very much, and he's wanting you, for you to come uh, to take him into your heart. Because there's coming a day... When, when he's coming back again. And if you're not ready for him to, to come back, you're not going to make it. I want you to accept Jesus. I know I've got a grandson that's an atheist, and I pray for him all the time that he'll come back, he'll accept Jesus. And I want you to accept too. Um, I want you to accept him too. Um, yeah, that's right. The concept is there. The, rap the word rapture is not in the Bible, but the concept is there. The thing of it is, these people that talk about rapture, um, rapture means caught up, caught away. That's true. We're going to be caught up, but we're it's but it's not a secret rapture. The thing, the reason it's not secret, is because Jesus said that every eye shall see him. We're all going to see him coming again, and you you have him coming twice. You have him coming secretly and then coming back for his church after that. That is not biblical. First Thessalonians four thirteen to seventeen talks about his second coming. Verse sixteen talks about it. You know, the, we're gonna, the dead in Christ are going to rise first, and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And if you get into the book of Thessalonians, it very much you can, you can understand what the, what the second coming is all about. And, a lot of, and those verses actually do away with that secret rapture theory because the Bible talks about him coming literally. We're going to see him come. He's coming with, the, uh, he's coming with his angels. And he's coming with the voice of the trumpet the ar and the sound of the archangel. Now, if, that, and if that's not literal, and if you can't hear that, that's certainly not secret. He's coming with the trumpet, the sound of a trumpet, and the, and the voice of the archangel. How in the world can that be secret? We know we're going to see him come. Every eye shall see him. You need, to, you need to understand that. I don't want people to believe in the secret rapture. That's not secret, though. Yes, it's the sec second coming of Jesus, but it's not a secret rapture. The reason you guys believe in a secret rapture is you want the easy way out. You want to say, well, we're going to be taken up from this earth. No, it's not. No, it's not. Jesus talked about coming as a thief in the night. The reason, the, you, you take that verse out of context. He's coming as a thief in the night for those that aren't ready for him. That's what it means. But he's not coming secretly. A, a thief does not announce his coming, does he? Jesus is not, and we don't know exactly the day or the hour that Jesus is coming. He says that. We do not know the day or the hour, but we know he's coming again. And he's coming literal, visibly, and audibly. And he's coming back for each and every one of us. Whether you're ready for him or not, he's coming back again. And if you're ready for him, you'll be taken to heaven. If you're not, you're going to be, you're going to be slain on the ground with the, with the angels. We don't know. I can't, I can't say when he's coming. It's very, very close. I'm telling you that. It's coming very, very, very soon. I don't put dates on it. We can't put dates on it because we don't know when his coming is. But we, we have to be prepared for it. But I'm here to tell you, you've got to be ready for what's coming first. We are, the, we are going to be here for the time of trouble. A lot of people think we're not, but we are. We are going to be here for the, for the time of trouble. And, we're going to, and you're going to have to be ready to go through that. Um, 
That's right. There is no rapture before tribulation. That's exactly what I'm saying. It's not biblical. You, you won't find that anywhere in the Bible where it talks about the rapture before tribulation. It's just not there. It is not there at all. You have been taught that because your pastors have been teaching you that for years and years and years. And they have been teaching you error. They are keeping you in darkness. And I'm here to bring you up. I'm, I'm here to get, bring you out of darkness into the marvelous light because you don't need to, to be in darkness. That's too many people are in darkness. And you need to, you need to come into the light. You know, and, and that's the thing. I don't want you to, to stay in darkness any longer. And if you're in a church where they're not teaching you Bible truth, or you're in, a, you're in a church where they're not even reading the Bible at all up in the pulpit, then you better come out of those churches right, right away because they're teaching you false. That's right, false doctrine. And when they talk about the secret rapture before tribulation, that is false doctrine. You do not believe it because it's not biblical. There's a lot of false doctrine out there that you've got to be aware of, aware of. That's where you put your faith and trust in the Bible. Put your faith, faith and trust in the Lord because he's there for you, you know, He's going to be there. When, he's going to be there for you, and nobody else is going to be there for you. The Lord is there for you, at all times. You just have to put your faith and trust in Him, and that's right. You have to study the Word. Yeah, there's do doctrines of devils. That's exactly right, Erlene. I, I couldn't have said it much better. That's exactly. They're teaching doctrines of devils. If you're following these, these men like Kenneth Copeland, or John Hagee, or Benny Hinn, or things like that, don't put your faith and trust in them because they're going to lead you down the primrose path. Do you think that they're teaching uh, the truth? They're in false doctrine too because they don't preach the Bible like they should. And all this so-called slain in the spirit that they do, that is not bi biblical either. Good evening. Welcome. It's not biblical either because everything that they're doing is, not, is they're not doing from the word of God. If, they, if, people are, if a pastor is going to get up in the pulpit and preach the word of God, you better have your Bible in front of you and see that what he's preaching is the truth. Because you know, a pastor can, can, can lie to you. Even our Adventist preachers can do the same thing. If they're not teaching the, the true word of God and not getting into the word of God like they should, then you need to leave those churches. Come out of them. Come into the light. Get into a church where they're going to tell you the truth because you're not going to hear the truth anywhere else if you don't, unless you do. I was in a, I was in a Sunday keeping church for the longest time. I knew there was something was missing. I didn't know what it was, but when I come, became an Adventist, I realized, hi, Carrie, welcome. Good to see you. Um, it, that's the thing. It, yeah, uh, our pastor does a, has a lot of his preaching from the from the um, screen, but he has Bible passages on there. But he also has us open up. Bless you too. He also has us open up our Bibles to to make sure. Because if you don't follow along in your Bible, how do you know that what he's telling you is the truth? Or do you know if he's preaching from the Bible or not? You don't know. See, that's the thing. If people are people put their or put a lot of faith and the trust in there. And I don't have to shut up. I think I'm going to escort you out here. Goodbye. Um, a lot of people, that's where people put their faith and trust in man. They put their faith and trust in their pastors. And, and instead of into, into God, into his word, you know, because the pastor, oh, they're, they're, they trust in the pastor so much that everything their pastor tells them is more or less gospel or law. And that's why people believe the things that they believe now. Why there's so many in false doctrines. Because they believe everything the pastor is saying. Instead of getting into the word of God and looking at it for themselves. Because the word of God is there. They just don't want to, they don't want to do it. They would rather believe their pastors. Because it's much easier to do them, to do that. Oh, you're so welcome. It's much easier for people to listen to their pastor instead of getting into the Word of God themselves. I read the Word of God every morning. I'm, this is my fourth time of going through it. Um, no, we do not. We believe in Jesus. We, you're talking about Ellen White. She was a prophetess, yes, but we do not trust in her. We trust in God only. We do not put her books that she wrote above the Bible. Quite the contrary. She told us not to put her books above the Bible, and we do not. The Bible is our is what we go by. We do read her words, however. Her words amplify the Bible. You can put her words right next to the Bible, and everything she says is is true. But we do not put we do not trust in her as as the only one that we we listen to or we or we believe because that's not true. I know a lot of people like to say that that we put our faith and trust in Ellen White. We don't put our faith and trust in Jesus. But you don't understand. That's not true. 
Ellen White told us never to do that. And we don't. I know a lot of pastors will talk about Ellen White in the pulpit. We do quote her writings, of course. But, we, but that, that, is, that is not the basis for who we believe or what we believe. We believe in God. Jesus is, Jesus is the only way. She's not going to save us. There's no way she save us. She's, she's in her grave now. I will tell you this, though. Her writings were very, were very um, inspired by God, and everything that she wrote is, is coming to pass because she put a lot of prophecies in her books that have, are coming to pass. The only ones that haven't, it hasn't been fulfilled yet is the, is the National Sunday Law and Jesus' Second Coming, but they're soon to be fulfilled. But when people say that, that we believe in an ancient prophet and not Jesus, you are so wrong. And we're not a cult. But she was, she was definitely inspired by God. And I suggest that anybody that doesn't know about her writings, get the book out, The Desire of Ages. Get, get that book and read it. It is, the, it is the most beautiful book on the life of Christ. Once you read that book about Jesus, you will never be the same. You will be so inspired about that, and you'll feel about Jesus a lot differently. You'll draw much closer to Jesus, and you'll love him all the more. I mean, that book makes me actually cry because it is so beautiful. But so I'm telling you, um, that, and that's the thing. I don't want you to say that Ellen White is the only one that we trust because we don't. The Adventists in here, we know better. We don't, tr we don't put our faith and trust in Ellen White. She was a prophetess, yes, but she didn't consider herself a prophet. She considered herself a messenger of God. She, she gave the message back in 17, when she, at the age of 17. But we never have taken her books and put them above the Bible, ever. And I never will, and I don't want any, anybody else to do that either. The Bible is the sola scriptura. That is what we go by it. And that's what I talk about. I talk about, we do not put her on a pedestal. I have never put her on a pedestal. Did you ever hear me put her on a pedestal? Jesus is who I'm going to have to, have to see. Now, I'm sure I want to see Ellen White when I get there, but I've never put her on a pedestal. No, I have not. And I think that you better, if you're going to keep, keep uh, arguing, I think you better leave this periscope because you're just near, nothing but a distraction. Um, we, we trust in God and trust in God only. We do not trust in anybody else. And there's a lot of churches that, welcome, Richard. Good to see you. Um, and that's the thing. A lot of people don't know what they're talking about. You take, you take our denomination you, and you go onto the Internet and you find out about our denomination, how you think we are, what people say about us, and you take that as gospel. You don't know. And it's about time that you hear that. Um, <laughs> oh, thank you, Richard. Welcome. Good to see you. Uh, no, I'm just telling you, I'm telling you about her books, that she was inspired by God. I did talk about Jesus, and I've been talking about Jesus. Um, and no, I, well, I don't know that much about it, but I'm going to tell you right now that Joel Osteen is along with Benny Hinn, Kenneth Copeland. He's a false prophet. He teaches false doctrine. Please do not follow Joel Osteen. Do not follow Kenneth Copeland. Do not follow Benny Hinn. I'm telling you, if you follow them, they're going to be kept in darkness. You're never going to understand what the truth really is because they're not going to tell you the truth. Not at all. That's all. They are money hungry. It's exactly right. They're for the money. They are for souls, not one bit. They don't preach the, what they should. Do they tell you the truth? Do they talk about Saturday? Be, um, I didn't... Uh, uh, I'm going to block this guy. If you don't... If you don't um, I didn't, she is not a false prophet. She never was a false prophet. She talked about the Sabbath. Jesus is, was, is, we keep the Sabbath. That Joel Osteen and them, they do not keep the Sabbath. They're in false doctrine. They teach you things that are not of the Bible. That's right. They don't preach the three angels' messages. And as long as they don't preach the three angels' messages, they are in darkness. They are in false doctrine. <clears throat> yeah, Osteen wants money. He wants money, so does Kenneth Copeland and Benny Hinn. Those of you that talk about Joel Osteen and Benny Hinn and things like that, I hope you realize that the money that they make, do they ever give it to the Lord's work? They use it to, to uh, satisfy themselves, to build up their coffers. Because as I understand it, Benny Hinn has a beautiful mansion. He's probably got a few airplanes now, too. Kenneth Copeland's got his own airport. And that's the problem. They all want money. And they're not, they're not for people's salvation. And that's the thing. We have to, don't follow them. Whatever you do, do not follow them. You listen to me. And, and get into the word of God. I'm telling you, you follow Jesus. Do not follow them because they're going to lead you down the wrong way. But all I'm telling you is you have free will. You can choose whatever you want. If you ch continue to choose to listen to them, then that's fine. You know, but, but uh, 
six, oh my goodness, six gyms, wow. <laughs> uh, nope, that's right, we can't take our money with us. The only thing we're going to take to heaven with us is our character. We can't take our money, can't take any money with us. And the thing of it is, the money that they're making, is it going in for the Lord's work? I say not. It's, it's going into to, uh, their coffers to make, to have more fancier houses, to have more airplanes, probably bigger automobiles and stuff like that. So don't follow them because they're just, they're not right. You know, I don't follow any of those televangelists. I never have and I never will. Um, and that's the thing. You get into the Word of God. Uh, that's what I do. I, I, I read the Word of God and I follow it and study it. Because you got to study to show yourself approved. You have to understand the Word of God is the only sure word of prophecy. It's, our, it's the sword of the Spirit is what it is. And if you don't get into the Word of God, you're never going to be ready for what's to come on this earth. And I'm telling those in here that have just come in, what's coming on this earth is going to be terrible for those that are not ready for it. And that's the thing. That Yeah, you're right, Early, and they are just motivated. They're motivated for money, more or less. They're, they're motivational speakers. Well, if you worship the devil, then I feel sorry, feel sorry for you. But you do need to stay in here because you need to understand that God is who you should worship. You should not worship the devil because you know what's going to happen. You continue to worship Satan and it's sad to say you're going to burn in hellfire along with the devil. And I don't want that for anybody. I beg of you, please start, please accept Jesus. Don't follow the devil because he's taking you down the wrong way. Uh, and don't believe in the secret rapture. I believe in the second coming, but I do not believe in the secret rapture because it's not biblical. I've told you it's not biblical and there's no proof that it is. And... If you continue to believe in the secret rapture, you're going to be you're you're going to be uh, uh, stunned when the when you're here for the tribulation. You know, might as well accept it. You're going to be here for the tribulation, and Jesus is coming after that. You know, so be be prepared for it and get ready for what's to come. Because if you're not, you're going to be caught on the wrong side. And I don't want anybody to take the mark of the beast. Um, that's right. We need you need anybody that hasn't accepted the word of God. That's right, it means caught up. If you haven't accepted the Word of God and haven't accepted the truth, I beg of you to get into the Word of God and study the truth for yourself. I don't want you just to just take my word for it. You need to get into the Word of God to understand that what the Word of God is saying is true. Jesus says what He means and He means what He says. Um, the thing of it is, what is the secret rapture? Well, I'm glad you asked. That, is, that has been going around for a very, very long time where where uh, people say that Jesus is coming um, secretly and then there'll be seven years of tribulation and then he's coming after seven years of tribulation for the rest. That, you know, they're, they're going to they're, they're be snatched away. That's what they call it. They're going to be snatched away. He's coming secretly. But the Bible does not say anything about secretly. And quite the contrary. It talks about him coming with the sound of a trumpet and the voice of the archangel. Is that secret? We're all going to hear that. We're all going to see him come. His coming is going to be so bright that he may come in the middle of the night, but it's going to be so bright. How is that going to be a secret? Oh, you're so welcome. I'm, I'm glad to help. That's not secret at all. I mean, we're going to see it. We're going to see him come. The Bible says so. Revelation 1-7. Get into the Bible and read Revelation 1-7. It says, every eye will see him, even those that pierced him. The ones that put him on the cross, they're going to see him come too. That's how literal, visible, and audible it really going to be. It's not going to be a, a secret rapture. I know it's easy for people to believe that. You know, they're trying to take, um, they're trying to take the easy way out. That's right. It's the doctrine of the devil. The secret rapture is the doctrine of the is the doctrine of the devil, and they're trying to take the easy way out. But they're but that's the thing. You could take the easy way out if you want to, but you've got to be prepared for what's to come on this earth because what's coming is going to be horrible for those that are not ready for it, and for those that are, end up taking the mark of the beast and, and take the seven last plagues. It's going to be a very terrible time. That's right. You've got to read the Bible and know for yourself because if you don't, you're not going to know that the Bible is our sure word of prophecy. Get into it and study it to know what's going to happen on this earth so that you're ready for it. Explain the Trinity. The Trinity is not biblical. The Trinity, we don't accept, it's called the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Trinity is, is another false doctrine. That is a, a, doc, a false doctrine of the Catholic Church. They brought that in there. But yes, prepare for Jesus' second coming, yes, but it's not secret. And it's after the tribulation, not before. 
prepare for the trip for prepare for the tribulation and prepare for Jesus second coming you do both that's right revelation 1 7 every eye shall see him even those that pierced him that's revelation 1 7 and get into that and read that for yourself no rapture not is not before tribulation it is after the tribulation if you keep saying it I'm going to block you I kept you read that Bible's gonna the what does the Bible mean when it says revelation 1 7 every eye shall see him what does that mean that doesn't mean half the people are going to see him and everybody else is not. Secretly, there's no such thing. You're not. You, you're believing a false doctrine. You're, you're, and, uh, and that's so sad that you're believing a false doctrine. You got to. You got to prepare for the second coming, but you got to prepare for the tribulation beforehand. You just don't want to accept the tribulation is coming first because you want to. You want to be taken away from this earth so you don't have to go through the tribulation. But that's why I'm telling you. Trust in the Lord because He will get you through. He said our bread and water will be sure. Don't leave and leave this periscope thinking that that you that I've told you that 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 everything is is a lie or that I've lied to you on anything because I haven't. I want you to put your faith and trust in the Lord because He is your only sure word. He is He is your Lord and He is coming again. He wants you to put your faith and trust in Him. He said our bread and water would be sure, and you could take that to the bank. He's going, to, he's going to provide for us. God will provide for us for everything. And you need to study the Bible. A lot of people, the thing they come in here, and the thing of it is they haven't studied the Bible enough. And, and they think they know it. You know, and I don't know everything there is to know about the Bible. Um, yes, he did, absolutely. He most certainly did. He died for our sins, and he rose again. And he's up in heaven right now, interceding for us. Okay, this guy, this guy's gone. Whoops. I've, I've, um, i I got to get rid of that Somebody blocked that guy rapture before tribulation because he won't he won't accept anything anyway. Uh, yeah, he's he's playing games with me. You're right because uh, I'm going to have to block him though because he will not he will not accept anything that he that you know. And it's sad that people come in here and they don't have an open mind. You know, I I do everything I possibly can. I'm like Regina. You leave them in here for as long as you can, but then if you can't, you know, they're not going to listen to you anyway. You're going to have to block them eventually. So I, if I don't block him now, um, I didn't. Uh, you just keep saying. Uh, rapture before tribulation. I'm telling you, that's not biblical. Get into the Word of God and study it for yourself. I'm not mad. I'm just a little uh, disappointed that you don't want to get into the Word of God and study it for yourself. When Revelation 1-7 says, Every eye shall see Him. You're trying to make something that's not there. You're trying to make something true that's not right. It's false doctrine. It's been around for many years. It's something your preachers have been telling you. And you and your preacher is not telling you the truth. Um, and And... Bible does not kill kids. Where are you getting off talking like that? The Bible does not kill kids. Wow, I don't know where some of these people are coming up with some of these some of these uh, things they're coming up with. But we need to get into the Bible. We need to study it. A lot of people don't realize what's coming on this earth. They don't know anything about the mark of the beast, what it, what it really is, what the National Sunday Law is, and and that's the thing. Um, there is a there is a national Sunday law coming for those that do not understand it where you're going to be required to either accept the seal of God which is the Sabbath or you'll continue to go to church on Sunday during that time and take the mark of the beast that's where you've lost your faith and trust in the Lord you know you got to trust your Lord in everything when it comes to the Sabbath the same thing when he says the Sabbath is the seventh day you got to trust him on that what he meant he says he means and what he means he says um, I have read the Bible. I most certainly have read the Bible. I read it every day. Um, because the Bible says you don't know the hour when Jesus is coming. We don't know the hour. Only the Father in heaven knows the hour. Now, I think Jesus may know the hour now. But at that time when he was on this earth, he didn't. But he may know now. But we don't know the hour. We know not the hour when he's coming. But we have to be prepared for him every day. Um, and... Jesus is coming. What's supposed to come? Well, Jesus is coming, but he's coming after the tribulation. Um, well, the thing of it is, he, it, it will be, he will be coming, whether you're ready for it or not. And that's the thing. Whether you accept he's coming or not, and whether you're ready for it or not, or whether you believe it or not, he's coming. And I just hope that you, you're on the right side. Because whether you know it or not, when he comes, there's going to be a resurrection of the righteous. Because the, they're, the, they're going to come first, and then the, then we which are alive and remain will go up to, with him after this. But there's also going to be a resurrection of the wicked. They're going to be slain by the brightness of his coming. They're going to be resurrected to see him come. And they're going to be slain. They're going to want the rocks and the mountains to fall on them. I don't want anybody to be in that first resurrection. That first resurrection is, is the first death. Then the second resurrection, after the 
thousand years of peace is going to be the second second death. Second resurrection, that's, it. that's eternal death for those that, that don't go to heaven, that have taken the mark of the beast. That's eternal death, and you're going to burn up in hellfire. So I want people to get into their Bible and study that. And I've read that over and over and over. Um, and and <clears throat> Well, that is between you and God. You ask God. If you should not really be an unwed mother, but that is between you and God. I would say yes, because you should not be having sex before marriage. I will tell you that much. But but you ask God to ask you to forgive you of your sins. That's not part of my periscope, though, so please stay on topic. Um, that's right. There's set no second chance for, for, this, for the wicked after Jesus comes. Um, what kind of Bible do I read? I read the King James Bible. That's what I read. Um, that's right. We don't want to take the mark of the beast. But the, unfortunately, there's going to be a lot of people that will be taking the... Hi, welcome. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to anybody that's in here. For anybody that that doesn't understand what the mark of the beast is, it's it's coming upon us very shortly. The prophecies are being fulfilled each and every day, getting closer and closer to that mark of the beast, and that's a very terrible time because we're going to be tried. We're going to be tried for our faith. We're going to be tested. We're going to be see if we're going to stand true to God. That's why I say keep your faith and trust in God because we're going to be trusted severely then, and we're going to have to stand up alone because the Holy Spirit is not going to be there to to help us anymore it's going to be withdrawn from the earth and we're going to have to plead our case before them and well if you don't want to accept jesus then you, you you'll go that way but why choose that you don't have to choose that please don't choose that i beg of you please at, please ask jesus into your heart that that you know that that's that hurts my heart that you that you want to that you don't want to accept jesus that you're well. I'm not saying that you're going to burn because you're not wind mother. You need to ask Jesus to help you and forgive you of your sins. Ask for forgiveness. I didn't say that you were going to die at all in your sins, but I'm just telling you that anybody in here that hasn't accepted Jesus, please accept him before he comes back, because he gives us all a freedom of choice. Absolutely, we all have the freedom to choose whether we want to, we want to accept him or not. Hi, blessed Randa, good to see you. Whether we accept him or not, now he it's your choice. You can choose him or you can choose the devil. He's not going to... Hi, Rand, hi, Justin. Good to see you. Welcome. Haven't seen you in a long time. Welcome. Um, he, he gives us all freedom of choice. It's up to us to decide which way are we going to go. Are we going to accept Jesus? Or are we going to choose Satan? I hope you all choose Jesus. I know there's some, probably some people in here that haven't accepted Jesus. I know I have an atheist in here. And I hope that you you start accepting Jesus because it, it hurts my heart really bad to hear see an atheist come in here and they may not want to accept Jesus. Uh, and and, that, and that's, the, that's the thing. It's, it's, I didn't block you. I didn't block you, but I'm, I'm going to block you because you, you're, you're distracting the message. You're distracting from the word. I didn't block you, but you've probably been reported. The thing of it is, if there's anybody in here that hasn't accepted Jesus, I beg of you, please, please, take him into your heart before it, that it's too late because he's waiting for you to accept him. He loves each and every one of us, but he's not going to make you choose him. You have that choice. We are all giving free will, and I hope you choose the right way. He wants you to choose him. Don't choose the devil, because if you choose Satan, unfortunately, you'll go where he's going, and where he's going is not going to be pleasant, because he's going to burn up someday. We know that's what's going to happen to the wicked people, and I don't want anybody to go that way. It's not necessary. But unfortunately, a lot of people choose that because they don't want to accept Jesus for one reason or another. They don't believe he exists for one reason or another. Or they just want to continue to do what they're doing, staying in their sin and continue in what they're doing. <clears throat> wicked, wicked people. <clears throat> um, well, the Lord isn't going, want, isn't going to want you to say anything to me that's, that's contrary to his word. I'm sorry. If you say anything to me, it cannot be contrary to the word of God because you will get blocked or you are or, or reported for it. Good, good evening, check it. Welcome. Good to see you because I'm talking about the word of God and anything I'm saying cannot be contrary to the word of God. When it comes to the secret rapture, that is contrary to the word of God. And if you talk about the secret rapture, you will be, you will be ignored because I am not going to bring that up again. Good to see you. Welcome. Yes, he is. Yes, he is very much so. But these people that come in here and like to distract from the message, you need to understand. I'm only here for one thing, and I'm here to tell you the truth. 
I'm here to tell you what the Bible says. And if you don't want to accept it, then it is on you. Then if you have a problem with anything that's in the Bible, then you need to take it up with God. You don't shoot the messenger, so to speak, you, because he's the one that, that's telling you what the Bible says. I'm just repeating it. Um, <clears throat> oh, you're not religious? Well, yeah, I know. You're not You're not distracting me. You're fine. Well, you're not religious, but I hope and pray that you accept Jesus before before it's too late. Really, I do, because he's, he's waiting for you to accept him, you know. And you don't really not realize how loving and kind he really is. He's a loving and merciful God. And he wants everybody to come to him. Put your faith and trust in him. He's there. Get into the word of God and read it from Genesis to Revelation. I know there's a lot of things that are, are hard to understand in the word of God. But that's where you have to ask for discernment from the, from the Holy Spirit. He will guide you into all truth. That's exactly what he'll do. He'll guide you into all truth. And I want everybody to get into the word of God. Once you get into the word of God... You're never going to want to put it down. You know what it does? It draws you much, much closer to Jesus. Closer than it ever has before. I know it draws me closer to Jesus each and every day. And I thank the Lord that I've got the Bible to read. Because there's some day we may, not, may, we may not have Bibles anymore. That's right. If you want to know him, he will help, really help you. You know, because there may be coming some day when our Bibles will be confiscated. We won't have them anymore. So what are we going to do then? You need to get into the Word of God while we still have a chance. And that's why I'm coming here too, because if you don't, if we don't get this message out now, there's going to be coming a day where we're not going to be able to get it out anymore, because we're going to be censored for telling the truth. Unfortunately, that's the, what's coming. And that's why I want to tell the truth. And I know not everybody's going to hear it. They're not going to all accept it. And I, that's understandable because the Bible talks about scoffers in the last days. But you know, I thank God for each and every one that comes in here because they're in here for a reason. I think a lot of them in their own way, they're wanting the truth. They just don't know what to accept. They haven't heard the truth before. So when they hear the truth, it's foreign to them. So they're not really accepting of it. But I'm hoping and praying that anybody that comes in here that has never heard this truth before gets into the Bible and understands it and reads it for themselves and understands what the Bible is trying to tell them. Um, and and that's and that's the thing. I I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna uh, argue with you. You're trying to distract from the message, and I'm not gonna argue with you. I'm just gonna tell you that that some of the things you have said have been derogatory. They've been they've been misled. You're misleading other people in here, and you cannot. And I'm not gonna let you do that. The truth is more precious than gold. Absolutely. And when I talk about the tribulation before the the rapture, that's exactly what I mean. Tribulation before the rapture is biblical, and I'm not going to I am not going to apologize for telling the truth in here. If I upset anybody in here, I'm not going to apologize for that either. Because you need to be sit on the edge of your seat. As a lot of people don't understand what the truth really is. And when the truth is put before you, it's going to make you on the, put you on the edge of your seat. It's going to make you edgy. And it's going to make you squirm. That's fine. It needs to do that. Because we need to wake up. We need to wake up and get into this. Get into your Bibles before the time of the tr time of trouble gets here. If you don't, you're not going to be ready for what's to come. So I'm hoping and praying that this pa periscope was a blessing to all that have heard it, and that you will get into the Word of God and understand it, and ask the Lord to help you discern what you what you're reading if you haven't understood it yet. Hi, welcome, good to see you. Um, that's right. We're going to have tribulation. We have trials and tribulations now, like I said. But all the trials and tribulations we have now don't pale in comparison to what is going to happen at the time of trouble. That is going to be the worst thing ever because the Bible talks about it in Matthew 24 being a, there's going to be a time of trouble such as never was, no, nor, sh nor shall ever, ever be. And you can take that to the bank. It's not going to be a very easy thing to go through. It's not going to be easy for us that don't go through it to watch maybe our loved ones go through it. And it's going to be very hard to, to, for, to, for the wicked that are going through it. And we need to, uh, we need to talk, tell the people that the Lord is coming soon. But he is coming after the tribulation, not before. We are going to be here for the tribulation. You need to understand that. You need to be ready for it. And I am not going to apologize for telling you the truth. I want you to understand that. Because I didn't come in here to, to, to lie to anybody. I want people to, to, to know that. The truth is the truth. That's what Forerunner always says. That's right. We're going to have the seal of God. <clears throat> and I hope you all understand that. That the, the tribulation is coming. Put your faith and trust in God. He will see you through it. He said our bread and water will be sure. 
Don't put your faith and trust in any man. Don't put your faith and trust in your pastors when they tell you there is no such thing as, or there is such a thing as a secret rapture, because they're going to do that. Just, uh, just uh, have them prove it to you in the Bible. They're going to try and prove it to you from the Bible, but they're, but the passages they're showing you have nothing to do with the secret rapture because it's not in there. Um, well, you've been pretty. Oh, you've been pretty busy. Oh, wonderful for your newborn. Congratulations. Uh, Yes, I do too. I pray that Jesus will tell you the truth. Exactly. Get into the Word of God and He will help you. That's right. The, those who overcome will be saved. I want all to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Um, and that's that's so true. I want everybody... Well, good good evening, Bren Dixie. Welcome. I want everybody... Uh, welcome back, Gabriel. I just want everybody to understand that I'm not here to to upset anybody, although I know this probably has upset some that don't believe it. But I've got to tell the truth, no matter how upset how upsets you, because this is the whole thing. People need to understand what's to come, and they need to understand that this world is getting worse and worse and worse. And if you start putting your faith and trust in man, you're going to get nowhere. Hi, River, good to see you. You're going to you're going to get no no nowhere. God was here from the very beginning. God created this world in six literal days and rested on the seventh day. He was here from the very beginning. So. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, what's to overcome? If, 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 yeah, that's right. There's nothing to overcome. The rapture before tribulation. <laughs> yeah, that's right. A word cut. The right. The word word cuts and heals. The word is a word is like a two-edged sword, and it, it's here to reprove you. But you got to look in. You got to get into the Bible, and study to show yourself approved, as we've said before, and understand that the Bible is the inspired word of God. First um, Timothy three sixteen talks about it being the inspired word of God. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it's, doc and it's profitable for doctor for reproof. And, for, and, you know, and people need to understand, the Bible is the true Word of God. And I'm here to tell you that I stand on the Word of God. Every word of it, from Genesis to Revelation. I hope you do too. So put your faith and trust in God. Don't put your faith and trust in any man. If your pastor's telling you lies, please don't believe him. Get into the Word of God and study it for yourself. Because if you don't, you're never going to come out of the darkness into the marvelous light. I want you all to understand that. I'm, I love you all, and I think I'm going to sing, my, sing the sanctuary song now so I can end this scope. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. For you, let us all be a living sanctuary for Jesus. And as John eight thirty two says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I th I love you all. I thank you for coming into in here, the live viewers as well as the replay viewers. I hope you have gained a blessing from this. I hope you all have a great night or day wherever you might be. God bless. Take care, and bye bye. <laughs>